Hello and blessings my beautiful souls, my name is Avalon Cameron and welcome back to my channel. Today I would like to talk to you about all of my beautiful June favorites. Wow, June was a real healing month for me. All of my accidents and the bad situations took place in May and then June came through and then it just healed me quite a bit and I felt myself coming alive again and I just had so much to lean into and so much to play with. So let's get stuck into it. First and foremost, let's talk about the fact that I can't leave the house without anointing myself with either one of these Florida waters. I'm typically gravitating towards this one here because it just has such a really beautiful fragrance. This one here is a little bit more, you know, traditional, more widely available. This one here was made by Earthly Alchemy and it smells heavenly. If you don't know what Florida water is used for, it's a blessing, protection, cleansing. It's the great all-rounder kind of thing when it comes to floral waters or magical waters and it is something that I have been using as I get ready to drive long distances, i.e. into the city, every time I leave the house. All right, so from waters to oils, let's just have a look at this one here. We have High John the Conqueror and also we have have the vein or the bina. We also have this good luck oil and we also have this crown of success oil and we have this beautiful Venus oil. So these have been my absolute favorites to work with in the month of June. The Venus oil here which is a beautiful flowery oil was created by Earthly Alchemy. It is a Venetian ritual oil perfect for those of you who are a Taurus or who are a you know Libra and who have the planet Venus in a really prominent place in their natal chart or who want to connect with the goddess Aphrodite, Venus, etc. So that's a really great honoring and ritual oil for yourself or for honoring the goddess. Then we have a crown of success, which I feel I needed. I just needed a little bit more success in the month of June because I had such bad luck. I wanted to go, you know, <laughs> with the idea of success just to get me out of my slump. Now this wasn't kind of geared. This wasn't the success that is geared in any direction. It wasn't business success. It was just like life success. Just let me succeed a little bit in life. So this one here is created by Juniper Moon's Apothecary. As you can see, the label is coming off and I use this so much. I use it a lot. I don't know how I'm going to go when that label falls off. Then I have a good luck oil here and another success oil in this one here. I'm running low on it, but this one here was created by Jessica from the House of Hoodoo in New Orleans. I want more. I just want so much more of her oils, her products, her candles. It's so hard for me to get them here. This one here came to me because a friend of mine was good enough to visit all those years ago, you know, before the borders were all closed and all this mayhem took place and brought me back some of this beautiful stuff. So this, 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 okay, this. I need more of it. So gods, guides, guardians, bring me more of these. That's what I need. And then the, both of these ones here were created by Juniper Moon's Apothecary. As you can see, this is a smaller Juniper Moon one. This is a practitioner-sized Juniper Moon. So if you are a practitioner and you use a lot of oils like I do, <laughs> then you may want to invest in a practitioner-based oils. But look at how delicious, delectable, yummy these oils are. Oh my gosh. So, so, so good. So good. So good. So good. Hi, John. It's really good to use in a magical oil like this. You can use pieces rather than the whole root because the whole root is hard to come by and it's also being depleted. Leaven of oh, vervain. Very protective. Very uplifting. Um, there's a lot of uses for vervain and sometimes they can be a bit of a paradox or a little bit of a oxymoron when you read the, you know, the magical properties. But you know what? I've just been leaving the house under the protection of a bit of vervain and if you're into the vampire diaries then no vampires for me that's basically it Okay, so let's talk a little bit about books now, some of my favorite books of the month of June. So first and foremost, one to two notable faves. Um, this was in the fiction category. I read The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, Mwah, Chef's Kiss Good, impeccable, loved it, really fantastic fa story, um, sort of deal with the devil type of story, a woman that just doesn't want to conform to the pressures of her society and her position as a woman 
woman in her life and then she makes this bargain and there's pagan gods and there's a little witchy, there's a little, you know, deity involved in it and next minute she's invisible. People cannot remember her. She wanders into a place and she could walk out and as soon as they, her, their eyes leave her, they forget her and then she could walk in and that, uh, there begins the introduction all over again. It's really crazy. The story was absolutely fantastic. The romance between Addie and Henry and oh my gosh so so good and then moving on to a book that really stole my heart uh this one's more literary fiction Addie LaRue is actually adult fantasy well it's in the sections of adult fantasy but it could teeter into young adult as well I found it very very um sensitive there was some really sensitive topics and oh, like tugs at the heartstrings whereas this next one which is once future witches One's Future Witches, absolutely incredible, Salem-based, Three Sisters, New Salem, uh, bringing back the the ways of Avalon, the priestesses of Avalon. It was incredible. It was during the, um, the women's um, suffragist movement and... I don't know why that didn't roll off my tongue properly, but it was a fantastic story of magic, simple magic. Um, and these stories, like this magic was anchored into old nursery rhymes. And as, as fantastical or as ridiculous as that may sound, the nursery rhymes were used as spells and it just worked. I listened to both of those books on Audible or audiobook and mwah, so, so good. So, 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 so good. Now, moving on to some more esoteric material, we are at this very present moment in time studying the Around the Tarot in 78 Days, which is a tarot book that I highly recommend for anyone who wants to learn a bit more about tarot or who wants to kick off their tarot journey. This is a really great resource. Um, this one here is by Marcus Katz and Tali Goodwin. I have have read this book before. I have it on Kindle, but I recently got it in hard copy so that I could study it for Patreon. So my Patreon community, the Card Slinger Tarot community on Patreon, we're studying this book together. I've started to tab it up. Absolutely fantastic. Really, really great resource for anyone working at, you know, developing better skills with the tarot cards. And I've got to say, worth every penny, worth every penny, an absolute favorite and one that I would recommend for beginners and have recommended for beginners for years and years and years now. Then I've been getting very, very into Lenormand. Now, when this book first came out, I got it on Kindle. So I've had it for a very long time. Did I read it? Did I get into it? Nah, I skimmed it. I didn't really get into it. But then suddenly something piqued my interest and I'm all about Lenormand at the moment. And this is just a personal story study for myself and so I decided that rather than have the book just on Kindle that I would get it in hard copy so that I could devour it and begin my study. Wait is there a thing in here? Oh yes look my best friend's business card. I, I will give her a shout out actually right now I'll give her a shout out. Her name is Erin Duncan. My beautiful friend Erin Duncan is suffering right now from breast cancer. She has had a double mastectomy. She has just finished her chemotherapy round and she's about to start radiation. She is so near and dear to my heart. You know, we are so connected. She was in my coven when I lived up north. She was a neighbor of mine. We've had a lot of highs and lows. Best friend. Absolutely love her. She is now putting this beautiful artwork that she makes onto cushions and tea towels and just beautiful things. And she sent me a little care package the other day and I was like in love with it. Look at how cute that is. Look at how cute that is. Sorry, I had to, I just had to mention her because you know what? Share the love. All right, Essential Lenormand, absolutely fantastic. I love Rana George's style of explaining and all the nuance that she puts into each of the cards. I have started to really understand the vibe of Lenormand, which is pretty difficult coming from a tarot background to a Lenormand background. And especially when you look at cards like the tower, <laughs> the child, <laughs> the sun, <laughs> the moon. I have tarot knowledge on that. I don't have Lenormand knowledge and it's really, really funny not to have Lenormand knowledge and to try and step away from the tarot and into that Lenormand based understanding because they do mean very different things. This is such a, a, a well-rounded book. I have not finished it. I keep flicking forwards and backwards. It's very reference style, but I'm getting through it. And I've got to say, there isn't a day that I haven't touch this book. There isn't a day in June that I haven't played with it or looked it up on Kindle or referenced it in some way. And I am doing a bit of a deep dive into it. So I'll be playing around with this book for a couple of months to come. I really want to absorb it all and then move on to another book that I have my eye on that I also have on Kindle, um, also about Lenormand. So 
This is such a great book and I really love the personality and the personal information that Rana George was able to add to this beautiful book. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Incredible, amazing. Highly recommended if you are wanting to learn Lenormand. My last book that I wanted to share here with you is the one that we have been studying for my Black Owl book. This is the only astrology book you will ever need by Joanne Martin Woolfolk. This book has been around since the 80s and this book is incredible. I felt like I knew nothing of astrology apart from, you know, just the, you know, the, just the the simplest astrology, if you know what I mean. And this book took me from beginner to somewhat of an early intermediate. It is fantastic. The book is laid out in such a common sense, easy to follow manner. It has a bit of a workbook style to it and it introduces little bits at a time. So you move through and increase your understanding of each of the cards. Oh, I was going to say cards. I'm in tarot mode. Sorry. Each of the signs. Now, I've got to say here, these areas here really, really fascinate me. So if you want to learn, learn a little bit more, pay attention here because you have, for example, Aries, duplicity, triplicity, quadruplicity, ruling planet, symbol, glyph, and then you have the dominant keyword, polarity, part of the body, lucky day, lucky numbers, magical birthstones, special colors, countries, cities, flowers, trees, metals, animals ruled by Aries, danger, and then everything about Aries in that beautiful way how others see you uh, personal traits and then your inner the inner you and then you move on to a, another sign altogether and then famous people with that particular uh, sign and then we move into the most important sign which is Taurus. <laughs> just kidding. They're all important. But this was such a great book for someone who really just wanted to build up a bit more working knowledge of astrology. And I've got to say, oh, it's worth every penny. I can honestly say, because we studied this formally in book club, I can say that people were walking away going, I get it now. Like, aha moments, I get it. Now, it is an old-fashioned book in, in so many ways. And there are so many other new and exciting tarot... No, again, there I go. Um, astrology books out there. Not tarot, but astrology books. But I've got to say, this one here came highly recommended. I've spoken to a few of my astrologer friends and they've said they started. This was one of their first, you know, starting off points. And even though there are other books and there are equally as good and amazing, this one here has a bit of a pride of place amongst, you know, collections because of you know, how good it was. So I'm impressed with it. I loved it. I'll give it five stars. 100%. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. All right, let's do decks. You of course know what this is. This is the Mary L Tarot, but this is the second edition of the Mary L. I have two copies of the first edition, but I didn't have the second edition. And I'll show you why I wanted the second edition. First of all, Bam. Dazzle, razzle, dazzle, bam, bam. It's, that's not why I wanted it. Um, but it is edged in this beautiful silver. The cards are smaller. So the original Marielle or the original mass produced Marielle is quite big. And then look, borderless. It is borderless. So it is a borderless version of the Mary L Tarot. And I've got to say, oh, I love that magician. Um, I'm working with the Mary L Tarot for our Around the Tarot in 78 Days, um, you know, course study thingy that we're doing over, thingy, that we're doing over in um, Patreon. And I'm just really looking forward to actively, consistently bonding and working with it. I'm a bit of a tarot kind of floozy. I jump from one deck to another if I'm not happy or if I get bored or if another one is just pretty. Uh, <laughs> I just flip and change and do those types of things, which is why I tend to work with just one deck at a time. But it's been very difficult for me to do that because I've lacked excitement in my life since I broke my ankle and all these things happen. So I've just been flittering around uh, from tarot deck to, oh, look at that. In just like oh that. <laughs> I love it so much. I love it so much. So yes, that has become a fast favorite. I've always loved the Mary L. It is a complex, oh, confusing deck, but it is so, so good. So, so, so good. And then another tarot that I have absolutely fallen in love with is the Hilda Tarot. 
here we go it's the gingham edition so this is the hilda tarot if you don't know who hilda is she is a plus size pinup uh, model of yesteryear and this is such a quirky fun innovative unique <laughs> just a just a really feel good deck and it is entirely based on Hilda you're not going to find any anything else other than Hilda and Hilda's antics so solely focused on Hilda uh, just it's so cute it is so freaking cute and I've got to say you know I've <laughs> just so cute oh I loved it it's such a feel-good deck and um, you know despite the fact that it lacks diversity despite the lack that it, it, it does all of that type of thing it's I don't think this one's meant to because it is technically based on one person and one person only and that is Hilda and so thereafter I have a couple of Lenormand decks now this one here is the Hilda Lenormand and it came with my copy of the Hilda Tarot. I don't recall ordering this, so I don't know what happened, but I'm grateful that it came. And I've got to say, this is so damn cute. It is a non-traditional Lenormand deck, which has really stuffed me up, so I can't use it a lot, but I have been pulling from it, from the Pixies Astounding Lenormand, which is still on my dining room table, and the other Lenormand deck that I have here, just so that I can, you know, begin playing with different Lenormand decks and understand the differences in symbolism and how you know certain creators depict Lenormand cards differently you know they do it with the tarot and you know but when you know the tarot you don't need to worry about that kind of thing so this is my newest Lenormand deck and it is what is it called the old style Lenormand by Alexander Ray I cannot remember oh here we go Hilda created by Duan Briars, deck created by, I can't even begin to read that, it's too far away. So I saw that one, the Hilda, on Instagram and I just simply had to have it and I ordered it direct from the artist. It was like PayPal invoice sort of situation. Uh, this is the backing of the old style and this is the front of the cards so very cute very traditional there's something really this appeals to me this really does appeal to me actually my bestie gordon um i.e gordon of rune soup is also doing a lenormand deck right now with a scottish artist so i get to see some you know some really fancy artwork from there as well which has been really fun to watch that unveiling so that is the old style Lenormand by Alexander Ray. And that pretty much concludes my favourites. I hadn't been leaving the house, so I don't really have all the jewellery that I might have and, you know you know crystals I just haven't really been working that much with crystals having said that though having said that my son has been absolutely loving that um you know that Sputnik that Argonite uh Sputnik and he's been bringing in his crystals and so I have been playing with crystals I just haven't been my own crystals if that makes sense and so my loves and so there we have it I have had a pretty good month, thank goodness, and I've been keeping to myself and doing a lot more creative art and playing around in my journal, and I'm doing an art, a watercolour art class at the ends of my day, so in the evenings I wind down with a little audiobook and a little um, watercolour art in many of my journals. I've really been focused on my Hobonichi and making sure to task manage and task plan so that I don't get overwhelmed now that I'm getting back into work, and there's so much for me to catch up on so I'm trying to be really fair with myself and not like implode so there we have it my beautiful souls and I just wanted to give a little honorable mention to the fact that I have created a GoFundMe campaign for my beautiful friend Alora Rain who is struggling at this very moment with a very serious succession of health uh illnesses I was gonna say incidents I couldn't find the word um, she's struggling quite a bit and we're raising money for her so that, to help her and her family get over this very difficult time they are going through right now thank you to everyone who has donated so far we are up to 2,400 Australian dollars and we aim to get to 6,000 Australian dollars so that her hubby can take some extra time off work and not worry about having to lose that 
that money and not being able to pay the bills. You know what I mean? So thank you, thank you, thank you for those who have supported. And I'll leave the link to that GoFundMe in the description box of this video. If you are able to donate, even in a, a small measure, that would be absolutely appreciated. I can't tell you the difference that it makes. And I'm really so beautifully overwhelmed and so impressed with those who have reached out with kind words and, you know, all of that beautiful energy being thrown in her direction. It just, it warms my heart. It really does because she is struggling. She's having a very hard time. And so this is when, you know, we need the support the most. So be sure to give her your love and some kind messages and all of that type of beautiful fun stuff don't overwhelm her at the moment because you know her medication is making it very hard for her to read so she, her eyes are a little foggy but she's there and she's still doing her things and um she's very grateful so I was talking to her today about it, so it was very nice. All right my beautiful souls well thank you so much for checking out this oh, June it's June favorites. Gosh, it's just flying. This year's flying. Doesn't everyone say that? I feel like it's so cliche to say that, but genuinely flying. And soon it'll be Christmas and soon it'll be New Year. And before long, we'll be here again going, oh my God. <laughs> All right, my beautiful souls. I'll talk to you again soon. Look after yourselves and take care. Mwah! Bye.